Hey developers, welcome back to ProRPA.com. This week we guys are going to talk about selectors. It's not a very difficult topic, but um, of course can make a big difference in terms of building a reliable bot versus a non-reliable one. Okay, so um, selectors we have discussed previously in um, the recordings uh, article as well that uh, you know selectors are those XML strings that are developed automatically by the UI path and uh, what they do is they help us identify or help the bot in identifying the UI elements of a of an external application and uh, correspondingly perform some operations on it like any input output operations right so let's see um, we have seen before how this works but say we have a word document in here right and uh, I'm going to show a very basic example. So say we want to type something in here in this Word document. I'm going to use a type into activity, right, where I'm going to indicate on screen that this is the area where I want to type and uh, I want to type hi, right? And uh, once you selected the UI element, which is like this writing area of the Word document, then um, a corresponding selector has been generated by UI path and you can see that right here this is the these are the different attributes of the selector and this is the selector which is like in the form of the XML strings so um, once you will perform the operation of writing this high let's say I run this here right then uh, the operation is performed successfully because it has written the word high in here right now let's say um, if you look into the selectors uh, more deeply, you find that you know there are gonna be a few attributes which are gonna make perfect sense, but of course there are gonna be a lot of other ones which you know your brain might not be able to comprehend because because of our limited knowledge on XML, right? So um, let's say I can understand that you know this is a Windows application uh, of exe file. It is of this class Opus app, and uh, it's got this the Windows got this title new Microsoft Word document dot docx, which is right here right and uh, what I'm gonna do is um, just to you know give an example say this file has been closed right and I have another word document open in front of me now I want to because it's it's a word document right looks pretty much the same of same size as well although that's not gonna make a difference and um, I go back to the program to the main program itself and um, I run this program I intend to write the word high in this document but somehow it's not working right I'm sure you must have guessed because um, of some whatever the selector is not able to identify but what's gonna happen right what's happening right now is we have already started the program the workflow and uh, it's looking for the UI element corresponding UI element it's gonna look for that for 30 seconds that's the default timeout for most of the applications for most of the activities that we're going to use and we can always change that in the properties as well by changing it um, there's this timeout parameter so as you can see that exception has been thrown and the exception says that you know it cannot find the UI element corresponding to this selector Windows Word EXE and this title and everything so if you go back to the selector here's the selector and it's not able to identify this UI element which is this writing area of the Word document why so you have to understand that all the attributes should match the ui element so that the bot can identify um, the application as well as its particular ui element where the operation needs to be performed right in this case as you can guess the file name is not new, uh, new microsoft word document dot docx rather it's document one right the name is different so it's not able to identify this um, well, this was a fairly easy example, so let's let's go ahead with this one itself. The first strategy to um, update this selector to make it more reliable is doing it manually by simply deselecting this. Now, if we, you know, the title has been uh, taken out, that means all the other attributes are still, if they are, if they suffice, identifying the element uh, for that particular external application, then the operation should work correctly. Let's try and see if that works. I just started the run statement again and uh, 
the operation worked, right? So uh, it was a fairly easy process, but there could be cases where you may have to deal with literally hundreds of attributes for, um, for, for very sophisticated enterprise applications like Oracle and SAP, you might have to deal with a lot and a lot of attributes and it would be possibly a little difficult to, you know, uh, play around with those and uh, selecting, deselecting them could be a bit, bit challenging, right? So you can do this, but let's not go with this approach. Let's still select it. What's the second option? Second option is based on these corresponding attributes, you can open the UI Explorer, UI Path Explorer, right? And you can um, get the complete view of all the selectors, all the UI elements currently present on screen, currently present on your desktop. So what you gotta do is if you click on UI Explorer, it's not gonna work, let's see. Why? Because it cannot find this UI element. That was the error, that was the exception that was also thrown, right? So what you're gonna do is Let's say, let's take this out because this was working fine. Let's check this out in UI Explorer. By the way, you can check the UI Explorer from here as well under the design ribbon uh, in UiPath Studio. And here it is, right? You can check out the visual tree, which is gonna show you all the different attributes. This is where it is right now. And um, this is the Word exe file. This is like the topmost level of the hierarchy of the Word document. And these are like the sub uh, areas within you know, uh, within the Word document, like this may correspond to menu bar or the ribbons, ribbon tabs. This particular element may correspond to these toolbars, right? These formatting toolbars and everything else. And uh, this one, it seems like is gonna uh, talk about, or particularly this WWG is talking about, or is identifying this um, area where we perform the writing operations within the Word document, right? So. Just to you know, see uh, which uh, which uh, particular selector, which particular UI element is currently being chosen. What we can do is we can select this or whichever element we want, and simply click on highlight. If you highlight, you can see that a yellow box is generated, which uh, shows that uh, this is the particular UI element that UiPath thinks is is or is recognizing based on these this selector and and its attributes, right? So. You can play around with the UiPath Explorer as much as you want. You can see if that works out for you, All right? You can also select and deselect the elements from here. Let's take this out. Okay, yeah, this is the selector editor which was like giving a very um, summarized view which you can also access from the properties panel but UiPath Explorer is gonna give you a very comprehensive and like the complete uh, overall view of where exactly your UI path, a UI element exists. Okay, but this could be a little confusing as well. Third approach, the way to stabilize the selector and the most efficient way, the easiest way, and really very sophisticated, right? So here's the selector, right? We have this attribute also selected, let's say. It was not able to identify the writing area of this new Word document which we opened, the document one. So what we're gonna do is, upon re-execution, once we saw that the UI element was not able to be recognized, we attach it to the live element. By attaching to the live element, what we mean is that currently something is there which your UI path uh, bar is not able to identify. So we are providing the new selector, and what UI path is gonna do is being very, very intelligent application itself, it's gonna compare the previous selector attributes with this new element selector that has been, that I'm gonna select in a few minutes, and it's gonna compare the two, and it's gonna give you a result in selector, right? All this in literally a few clicks. Attach to live element, and I select this area where the operation needs to be performed, and once you get this information window that says the selector has been updated to match the live element, that means this operation worked successfully of, you know, the pattern recognition and that you selected pretty much uh, a similar uh, UI element based on the previous selector as well. So if you can see, it used a star symbol in here in the title document, in the title of the document attribute, right? So what it's saying is, it has to have the word hyphen word, but other than that, 
it could have any character anything in here star means it could be any number of characters including null character nothing at all as well right so now you, you see that it has been attached to live element you can also validate to see if um, you know the collector uh, the, uh, the, uh, the selector is uh, um, syntactically correct or not so this seems valid as well let's hit ok go to the selectors run this again and this time hi perform uh, the input operation performed correctly right so that's how it is um, that's how we have selected the uh, that's how we have efficiently updated the selector now let me give you another example right based on uh, what the selector is right now let me actually let it be written here and we have let's say another word document which is document 2 right now if you see document 2 is also pretty much uh, fulfilling all the criteria of getting this uh, attribute satisfied all these attributes right it's star word that means you know now um, it also satisfies the title name as well and uh, all the other things because it's a word document so it should be fine so now I have when document one and document two open right let's keep it like this and here is my program if I run this where do you think the operation should be performed let's check that out it's performed on document two why well what happens is in case um, two UI uh, like both document one and document two were perfect candidates or equal candidates to get the operation performed upon them the input operation however document 2 was chosen because that was the last active window that was that I was working upon right so if you even if you use alt tab you know um, to switch between different applications uh, while working on something then you know you see the last the most recently opened window is the one that you can choose first versus something that you were working a, a little while back right so that's pretty much the same methodology that has been followed in uh, choosing the selector in case um, the selector satisfies two or different UI elements so that might not be a good approach so the best way to do is put the static um, values of an attribute within a selector as is and keep use wildcards only for the dynamic attributes so let's say for an example like um, I'm just taking a hypothetical example here right if your file the word file that you will be working on or the bot will be working on would always have this uh, this keyword as document it's always gonna have this document one two fifty five hundred could be anything right and you updated this manually the document keyword in the selector now even if you have this new Microsoft Word document open even if it is last active right and um, if you perform the operation the new Microsoft Word document is but still it went to the document 2 or the document 1 in this case and performed the uh, operation the input operation so we built actually a pretty reliable selector in this case even if there were um, like multiple window word windows open there's a better chance that you know because of the static attribute uh, value that we put in that it was able to recognize the element and perform the operation over there right so um, that's how we use the selectors you're gonna see a lot of selectors different attributes and there could be hundreds of attributes the only way to you know get comfortable with them is through practice so you gotta practice identify different UI elements of other sophisticated enterprise applications and play around with them and use the attach live element as much as possible and uh, you know if you can identify the static variables uh, the static attributes then uh, do do incorporate them uh, in the selector so that your bot is reliable right that was pretty easy um, also I want to mention that uh, there are two types of selectors right the partial selector and the full selector and uh, we have discussed that uh, in recording as well and um, I have provided a very good detail uh, in my this week's blog post as well so please do check that out um, just to give a quick overview right uh, the partial selector is not gonna have all the elements like the containers and everything all, all the attributes within its selector 
of the UI element, while a full selector, which is also generated by basic recording, is uh, something that incorporates each and every attribute starting from the topmost hierarchy to the most granular level detail, right? So you can also um, check that out that, you know, um, in uh, basic recording, we have discussed this in detail that um, we have an attach window container, which acts as a container for, and subsequently we use partial selectors um, to select the UI elements and therefore, and there on go ahead with it, right? Okay. Um, I was also telling you about the um, timeout activity, right? So if you don't want your uh, bot to work for, to wait for 30 seconds to keep looking for the UI element, you can always check this out, this timeout MS activity, uh, the property, and um, you can put anything in milliseconds, right? So right now it's gonna look for um, the bot in the, the particular UI element for just five seconds. If it doesn't, it's gonna either throw the error or if you have, except, if you have implemented some exception handling mechanisms, your bot will be you know working based on those activities exception handling again is going to be very important topic and this the selector that that the bot is not able to find the corresponding selector is one of the major exceptions we get in rpa projects so it's better to deal with them to understand selectors right here right now we'll also be talking about this when we'll be talking about the exception handling in subsequent chapters right and um, this is pretty much it for this week. I also want to thank you guys for your overwhelming response on my uh, CRISPR Learning for UiPath book, which is available on Amazon across worldwide. I have uh, got responses from different countries, from UK, from Japan, and uh, from India, from USA. And uh, they have been very, very thrilling responses and uh, people have really liked it. So thank you, thank you very much. I would also appreciate if you could put a word on Amazon and let your friends know about it. And um, alongside, if somebody wants to learn um, RPA tool UiPath um, in a faster way, if there's, I don't know, an urgent need, a, an upcoming project or an approaching deadline, then um, you can also check out my online video courses, which are available on Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y, and also on Skillshare. Um, the links for both of those I have provided in the description in this YouTube video. So please do check that out and um, just keep automating. Thank you very much. Goodbye.